Hello again, and thank you for joining me. I hope that you saw last week's message uh, where I introduced myself in kind of a formal way. So this week what I've done is dressed semi-formally and not prepared a script. Uh, last time it was probably pretty obvious that I was reading off a prompter. I wanted to make sure that I got my autobiography right without throwing in anything extraneous. So this week I'd like to talk about uh, the intersection of three points or three ideas. They are freedom and the illusion of freedom that is given in our undemocratic, capitalistic, uh, general global society. Uh, the futility of the acquisition of wealth and the importance of universal health care. These three ideas do intersect in fundamental ways that will be important to the future of the world and to my ideas for global change. So let me start with the futility of the acquisition of wealth. The acquisition of wealth has become an overriding goal in many people's lives in our commercial capitalist society. Why is that? There is no intrinsic value in money. Money is a symbol. It uh, was created to replace uh, actual goods in exchanges between people to make exchange easier so that uh, a person would do work for a certain period of time and instead of receiving directly grain or meat would receive currency to purchase the things that were necessary for life and this was done because of uh, the creation of communities so that uh, we would live together not everyone would go out and gather or hunt some people would uh, plant crops, some people would conduct agriculture, um, various people would have various different roles. But as we have become a globalized, industrialized society, um, that notion has been abstracted away to the extent where money itself is something that we lust after, that we go after. And in a way, I think a lot of people have lost track of what they eventually want to do with that money. What is it for? Of course, we acquire material goods, and uh, I'm part of that. I have a collection of remotes for all of the devices that I like to watch things on. Um, I have hundreds of action figures. I'm as materialistic as anybody else because I'm a product of this society. But does this make me happy? Is this the eventual goal of my life? Is that where I'm heading? Uh, honestly, I can say no. And in fact, as I've been truly happier in my life, I've acquired less and less, and I've wanted to acquire less and less goods, stuff to tie me down. So, if that's the way it is for me, um, just speaking from my own experience, acquiring wealth to purchase goods is not an end in itself. What would make me happy in life is a wonderful wife and a great home life. And I have that. Um, and I think that anyone can have that. What makes me happy is the ability to express myself artistically. And I can do that with the acquisition of modern tools, yes. But I expect that I could be happy creating percussion with a cardboard box. So, wealth, do I require it to succeed by my society's definitions? Absolutely. But should I change to meet society? Or should I change society to meet the real human drives? It's a good question, and we'll be answering those questions together, hopefully. Now, there are people who are much wealthier than me. Are they happier than me? Well, quite possibly in some ways, in other ways perhaps no. What are you searching for? Please ask yourself whether you are wealthy or not wealthy. But particularly if searching for money has been a part of your drive to this point, what's it for? You need things, of course, and you need currency to buy things in our society. Are all the things that you're saving your money for things that you need. Will they make you happy? Will they make your family happy? 
Or are you just hedging your bets, protecting yourself? Because the longer we live, the more we're going to need money. The more inflation happens, the more money we will need. The more currency changes, the more money we need. You won't take it with you when you die. And there will be times in your life when it will not help you at all. That is the bridge to freedom and our illusion of freedom in a capitalist society. Are you free? Freedom is the ability to choose, to determine, to some extent, your destiny. And most importantly, to determine, to some extent, uh, your community and your society's future. Who has that freedom? I don't. I do not have that freedom. Uh, I feel free, of course, when I'm at home with my wife, with my family, petting my cat, uh, creating art, uh, talking to you right now. I feel a sense of freedom. And yet, I'm thinking of the minutes and hours ticking away until I go back to my job in retail. I'm thinking about uh, the fact that the equipment that I'm using to talk to you cost me money, of course, so I'm worried about these things. Um, am I free to eat whatever I want? Uh, well, certainly not. There is price. There is a lack of variety. There is the need to go to a big corporate store and buy probably corporately farmed food. So these are the trivial lacks of freedom. Let's think about larger gaps in freedom. Whenever one has to worry about crime happening, whenever one has to worry, I could get mugged or my car could get broken into. I seldom worry about these things in St. Albert, Alberta, but bad things do happen here. And whenever one has to worry about that, that is a lack of freedom. The existence of crime in a society impinges on one's freedom. Uh, am I politically free? Certainly not. I vote. I vote for someone that uh, I didn't choose as a candidate. I vote for parties whose very existence troubles me. Um, I do not have freedom. I have a limited set of choices. I, in one of my novels, I put it this way. Our illusion of freedom is given to us because there is a limitation of the choices that we have. Uh, for example, if I was a child and I was asked, uh, so what would you like to eat today? Would you like to eat um, beef tripe or some delicious chocolate ice cream? Well, I'll choose the ice cream. If someone wants to ensure that I will choose beef tripe, how about this? Well, would you like beef tripe or cow dung? or cat urine. Given those choices, I'm going to choose the beef tripe. Our society consistently puts before us a plethora of unacceptable choices, and we choose the least unacceptable. Uh, American politics is all about this. You have two parties that are virtually identical, that are both capitalistic and militaristic, and will destroy the planet given time. The illusion of choice. No matter how much wealth you acquire, you will not get past that illusion. Even if you set out to buy a party, the parties that are for sale are limited. Now let's think about the ultimate lack of freedom. All of your money can't save you when you're sick. My limited resources can buy me a certain amount of health protection and health freedom. With the minor ailments that occasionally trouble me, I can buy ibuprofen. I can treat my depression. I can uh, treat erectile dysfunction if I choose. Um, so I have certain freedoms. But let's say I get cancer. Whether I have my current salary or whether I own a multi-billion dollar company. Can I buy the research that will save my life? Oh, probably not. For many, many reasons. For one, it's just not a government priority for us to be healthy. This is clear. Read some headlines. Do some research. It is not a government priority. It should be a social priority, but we've been educated into thinking 
that it's not necessary or that uh, we don't have to concentrate on universal health care or that for-profit health care can be more efficient. It never will be. But even, even if I could create that priority, even if I could replace the government with one that wanted to fund some pharmaceutical research, you'd have to get in bed with pharmaceutical companies. If I wanted to do it on my own, I would probably have to bribe or buy a pharmaceutical company. And pharmaceutical companies do not exist to treat health conditions. They exist to market products and to increase margin. And that system is never going to get us a cure for cancer. It will treat cancer, absolutely. Uh, carboplatinum, for example, very expensive drug. It would be a shame if it could no longer be sold. Taxol, expensive drug. Um, Calix, very expensive chemo drug. What would the company that makes it do if it was no longer needed? Wow. Will we ever have a freedom from this sort of thing? Not with the current world regime. Society exists to serve the need of really a very few who collect and collect and collect currency. That currency will do them no good, as we have explored. All of that currency deprives you of your freedom. And none of this will keep you and your loved ones alive. I know this from personal experience. Many of us do. Do not be frustrated. Don't be. There is a freedom above all of this. You have that freedom. You can choose. It'll just take a lot of work. Our system that we have now doesn't have a future. But we can make one. We'll talk again soon. Thank you.